Hello, today's lesson is Chapter 8, Lesson 5, Compare and Order Fractions. Our focus or essential question for this chapter is how can different fractions name the same amount? Okay, how can you compare and order fractions? Basically, what we're trying to find out is, is when we look at two different fractions, um, how can we compare them? For example, decide whether they're greater than, less than, or equal to. And also, just putting different fractions in order. So let's clear that. And move on to our next slide here. Laura is buying buttons for a dress. The buttons she wants come in one half inch, three fourths inch, and three eighths inch sizes. Laura decides to buy the smallest buttons. Which size should she choose? So let's look at those fractions real quick. We have one half, we have three fourths, so one, two, three, fours, and we also have three eighths. So one, two, and three eighths. With the fraction titles, this makes it pretty easy to see that three eighths is the smallest of the fractions. Um, it wants us to order them in order from least to greatest. So our first fraction is the smallest one, which is 3 eighths. Our next one would be the half inch. And our largest size would be 3 fourths. Okay, Laura should choose the 3 eighths inch button to choose the smallest button. We'll clear that. <clears throat> In Mrs. Sanchez's class, two thirds of the students were wearing sneakers, and four fifths of the students are wearing jeans. Are more students wearing sneakers or jeans? Explain your reasoning. Well, what we need to do is find out which of these fractions is bigger. And we can do that by dragging out the tiles, which works and, and is a great way to do it, but it is a little bit time consuming. Um, we can also do this mathematically. It's kind of hard to compare them when they're Denominators are different because they're different size pieces. We could try drawing a picture. We can drag out the models. But if we figure out how to divide these into the same size pieces, then we're going to be able to solve this problem easily. So for example, if I have 2 thirds and 4 fifths, If I get my denominators the same, then I can just see which one has the biggest numerator to decide my answer. I know that both 3 and 5 go into 15, and so, and I also know that I can times a number um, with the numerator and denominator being the same and find an equivalent fraction. That's what we've been doing the last few day days in assignments. So 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 5 is 15. And to get the 5 to 15, I'm going to have to times by 3 over 3. And 5 times 3 is 15. And 4 times 3 is 12. Well, as I look at this, <coughs> um, now I'm comparing fractions with the same denominator. So in other words, whatever it is I'm dividing up, in this case, 
sneakers and jeans are pieces of clothing. If we divided it into 15 equal groups, 12 of those groups are jeans, and 10 of those groups are people wearing sneakers. Well, 12 is obviously bigger. Because we're comparing the same size pieces, we can just look and see which is bigger. And 12 is obviously bigger than 10. So more students are wearing jeans. And we did explain that as we discussed it. Okay, going on to the next question. It says Ramon has an insect collection. A table shows the lengths of four insects in his collection. Which is longer, a mosquito or a whirly bug? So we have to look at these, um, these different fractions. We really don't need all of them. We need the mosquito and the whirly bug for this question. A whirly gig, sorry. A whirly gig beetle. So a mosquito is one fourth of an inch long. Um, and a whirly gig beetle is three eighths. Well, looking at our multiples of four. It goes 4, 8, and we already have a denominator of 8 in the whirligig beetle, so we want to probably find 8 as our common denominator. We don't have to change 3 eighths at all, um, but to get 1 fourth to equal something over 8, we would think, okay, what do we need to times that 4 by? to equal 8. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. So if we times by 2 over 2, we will end up with an equivalent fraction. Two, 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So 1 fourth is the same as 2 eighths. And then it's easy to compare. Um, basically, we have 8 is our common denominator. Well, 3 is bigger than 2. And so the whirly gig beetle is longer. Let's go ahead and check these slides. Okay, here we have another quick little question. Clear my writing off. Okay, it states the table shows cooking times needed for different foods. Order food order the foods from least to greatest. So we want to least to greatest cooking times. So we need to figure out which of these fractions is the smallest and up to the biggest sizes. As we look at one fourth, five sixths, and two thirds, um, we can compare some of their multiples. Oh, they're comparing numerators here. They decided that it, that would be easier. And so as we list out the multiples of the numerators, we have one, five, and two. And you can see that 10 is the common multiple in each of those. So as they, as they multiply these out, we have um, to get the 1 to equal 10, we need to times by 10. So 1 times 10 is 10. 4 times 10 is 40. So we have 10 fortieths. And then as we look at lasagna, 5 times 2 is 10, 6 times 2 is 12, and the enchiladas, 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 5 is 15. Well, let's think about what these fractions mean as we decide which one is the biggest. Um, in this case, our denominators are still very different, but our numerators are all the same. As we look at the denominator, we need to think, okay, 
the more pieces something is cut into, the smaller those pieces are. That makes sense, right? And so if we have the same number of pieces, we to find the smallest piece, we actually look for the biggest denominator because that means that that has been cut up into 40 pieces in, this, for, in the case of the rice. It's been cut up into 40 equal segments, whereas the lasagna has only been cut into 12 equal segments. So each of those 12 pieces is going to be much bigger than the 40 pieces of rice and our enchiladas sit there in the middle. Let's go to the next clip and just put these in order here. 10 is much closer is much closer to 12 than it is 40. So 10 out of 40 is smaller than 10 out of 12. So from least to greatest cooking times the foods are lasagna or sorry, our rice, enchiladas, and then the longest being lasagna. One-fourth, two-thirds, and five-sixths. And you can see the little um, models there to show how that works and to check it. So here we're going to compare these fractions. Um, you can draw out models, you can, you can change them so they have a common numerator or denominator. Um, in this case, I know that 2 goes into 4 really easily. Um, 2 times 2 is 4, so 1 times 2 would be 2, so 2 fourths is an equivalent fraction. 3 is bigger than 2 fourths, 3 fourths is bigger than 2 fourths, so we're going to go that way. Here they already have common numerators, so I want the fraction that's cut into the least amount of pieces. That's what our alligator here is going to eat, the least amount of pieces, three-fourths. Okay, so just discussing this a little bit, as we compare seven twelfths and two six, we should first find a common denominator and then compare our numerators. The largest numerator would be the largest fraction. So in this case two six, well the six will go into twelve easily so if I times the six by two that will equal twelve and two times two is four so now we can look very easily. If something's divided into 12 equal pieces, seven of those pieces is obviously bigger than four of those pieces. And so seven twelfths would be the greater number.